darling Richard, I'm sorry to have gone without saying goodbye to you and giving you a last kiss, but I can't stand it anymore and I've got to go now. Um, there's nowhere to go but back home. You're such a nice, dear boy. And I don't mind your being standoffish with me, because I knew all the time you were really in love with Nancy Ellis, even though she's obviously not in love with you. Well, she can't be, can she? Don't forget me, because I am a true friend, and perhaps a bit more. Love, Sissy. I've already told you I didn't have a money available. Yes, I know, but that is dangerous. I mean, I could have been hurt, and they don't seem to know what they're doing. I mean, my God, this act's gone to the dog since I was last around. Doris, I don't know. Oh, you too, Nick Arlington. You haven't improved. Come on, now. Let's start from the top. Listen, you. Could you possibly get that tempo right? Come on. Let's start. Come on. Where are you going? Mrs. Tingley, would you like to come for a drink? Who's paying? Well, I'll pay, Mrs. Tingley. Oh, don't call me that. It sounds so damn silly. You're a, what's it, Richard, Dick, and I'm Doris. You can call me Doris. Well, that doesn't mean to say I'm going to spend any money on you and these ridiculous pro bars. Signed photos of great artists, I don't think. All pals of the landlord, I also don't think. You can buy me just one scotch and splash, and don't imagine I'm joining in any rows. I'm here to save money, not to spend it. Well, last night I beat that woman my dick down to 19 bob for the week. That's bed, proper breakfast and a hot supper. And I'd have got it done to 17 and 6 if I hadn't been tired. I mean, it can be done, you know, if you set your mind Hello, to... Harry. It's, it's for me, isn't it? It's Lily Barris, isn't it? Hello, Lily Barris. I suppose you think Hi, she's Mr. a wonder. No, I don't. To oh, this that's right. Like oh, good. So do well, I. On and off the stage. Absolutely. We're in. What you We're do back to next week. No? Oh, oh, tell me. I see. I don't like smut. Hello? Now, what is all this about a murder? I asked Nick, but he didn't seem to want to talk about it. Did it himself, perhaps? Come on, come on, tell me. Well, surely you've read about it. I have indeed. Nonny Colmore, wasn't she called? But what else? Uh, well, the police have called in Scotland Yard and we're all to be interviewed again by an Inspector Crabbe. Well, you can't drag me into it. I haven't worked for Nick Oliphant for three years and only left to marry Archie Tingley. More fool me. If the man who did it's one of those sex maniacs I saw at the band call, I'm not surprised. Just let them try any funny business with me, that's all. Just let them try laying a finger on me, that's all. One night when a certain comedian tried some hanky-panky, I kicked him right in his best joke. Well, he hasn't forgotten that, I'll be bound. I'll tell you what variety's full of, mostly. Riff-raff. Just downright common riff-raff, earning ten times as much money as they're worth. Some of them. I agree. Right. Come on, then. But didn't you miss the variety stage when you left? Miss it? Not a bit of it. Being married to Archie Tingley is enough variety stage for me. He's in and out of more jobs than any other man in England. When people ask me what he's doing, I have to think. And even then, I'm sometimes two jobs behind. He can get almost any job he wants. But as soon as he started, either he can't keep it or he doesn't like it. And what do I say? Nothing. Well, hardly anything. He twists me all the time round his little finger. I wish to God I'd married a steady man I didn't much like. What job's he doing at the moment, Doris? Oh, for heaven's sake, Richard, have a bit of wit. I've just told you that's the kind of question I hate. He's selling something. Turkish tobacco or electrical fittings or bicycles. He can't even ride one. Sure, he'll tell us himself when he gets here tomorrow. I don't know about you. But I'm off. Archie's here. If you've nothing better to do, you might as well come and have a look at him. 
Mr. Herncastle, what a delight for me, my dear fellow. How do you do? Your uncle doesn't care for me, you know. I suppose because I stole Doris yeah, away from him. Yeah, that helped, but he wouldn't like you anyhow. I don't know why anyone does. And I'm sure you and I will get along famously. Will you have a drink, please? No, you're not starting that. Doris, please remember I've come over 200 yeah, miles. Yeah, just see a man about a job. You told me so. I came to see you, my dear. I've been missing you terribly. And now when I suggest a friendly drink. Oh, but all right. But just one. Right. I'll call a taxi. Did he say a taxi? Man, I can't imagine how I put up with him. Not that he's not better than most of you. I mean, he does try to please. Not like most men who think they're doing you a favour just by yawning or blowing smoke in your face. And it's not Turkish tobacco or bicycles. But boats now. Boats! I ask you. What sort? Oh, little boats for park lakes. And I doubt if he's ever been in one in all of his life. He gets talking to this fella in an expensive saloon bar. And within half an hour, he's bought 50 boats with money he hasn't got. I mean, one time I just stopped him from buying 7,000 roller skates. I don't care for him. I don't care for him at all. But I'm stuck with a mountain.